Anuj, uh, some of you know me from my previous session. Uh, but in this session, uh, I'm going to be talking. So the previous session was about, you know, what's the difference between prototyping and production. This session is going to be very different. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, voice assistants like Alexa, Google Home, and more uh, on microcontrollers. So typically, uh, any commercially available project uh, product uh, runs on a Linux-based system, some sort of a uh, non-RTOS heavy kind of a thing. Uh, but what we've been experimenting with and have been pretty successful with uh, at Espressif is uh, making this run on $3 and $4 chips, right? Uh, microcontrollers with a couple of megabytes of RAM, uh, sim similarly a couple of megabytes of storage, and that's about it. So the uh, idea is that uh, this becomes so cheap that this gets built into you typically like dumb things as well. For example, a coffee machine. Uh, the barrier to entry for adding a voice assistant to it becomes very low because now it's only a few bucks. So I'm from Espressif, uh, so I'll be using S. Uh, so unlike the previous talk, all the stuff that I'm about to show is only runnable, like workable on Espressif microcontrollers, uh, the GitHub project part of this. Uh, again, yeah, uh, you can follow this on GitHub. And about the company, yeah, we are a 10 year old company. We are a fabulous company. The 230 employees part is a little outdated. We are now 260. Uh, and most of you must have heard about us because of ESP8266, which is uh, one of our most popular chips. And uh, yeah, ESP32 is a successor to that. It comes with Bluetooth, uh, both Bluetooth Classic and Bluetooth Low Energy. So uh, this is the architecture of ESP32. So this particular attack, I'm going to be talking more about ESP32. Uh, so this is how it looks. Uh, essentially what we have is uh, A02.11 BG and Wi-Fi. Uh, two microcontrollers, uh, two cores, sorry. One microcontroller with two cores. We actually have a smaller core, which we use for ultra low power stuff. But in this particular uh, scenario, we are not using it. But yeah, so this is the ULP processor that I'm talking about. And uh, that's it. So the Bluetooth part is actually interesting because it, uh, we are building low cost speakers. So that means we want to have the Bluetooth pairing like connect to a different Bluetooth speaker as well as connect our phone to this particular speaker. Uh, so we have a, an open source project on GitHub, uh, which is the ESP Audio SDK. And what it essentially is, it's based, so this is our generic SDK for non, like not related to any domain stuff. So this has all the low level drivers and stuff. And on top of that, we have created a bunch of uh, components, which basically uh, bring it at par with any Linux based system. Of course, we will uh, never have that breadth of functionality, but whatever is required to run audio applications, uh, we can do so be that we uh, you know codecs like yeah I mean these are all the codecs that we support uh, some of them are easier <laughs> said than done uh, we do stuff like uh, Bluetooth because we already have Bluetooth as part of our stack uh, as part of our radios we do stuff like airplay DLNA uh, and more and uh, yeah all of this uh, so why this is interesting is uh, so if you want to do like the previous talk, like if you want to put an Alexa or a personalized speaker, uh, you would typically go and buy a Raspberry Pi, which goes for $350, uh, sorry, $35, <laughs> my bad. So which typically goes for $35, but uh, if you want to like really go to production and you really think about the cost, then uh, microcontroller is always going to cost less as compared to a microprocessor. That, because, that is because it's got its uh, RAM built into it. The flash is typically an external component, but it's pretty cheap because you don't require as much because you're not running Linux. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's a very small constraint system which has very few other passives or other components that are required, which is never the case when you're building a Linux-based system. Uh, so based on, so 
because we have Wi-Fi, which gives us internet connectivity, we can also do a lot of music related stuff. So all of these players have their own standards. Uh, the, so it's all essentially at the end, uh, HLS, which is HTTP live streaming. So there are some versions of it. Not everybody follows standards, which is something that we are used to. But yeah, uh, essentially uh, we are fetching music remotely and playing it on our speakers. Uh, the typical target products for this, uh, some of them you might already have in your house. Uh, some of them might not be smart yet, but making it so cheap makes it a no-brainer to put it inside of your alarm clock. Because if you're going to buy an alarm clock, which you know has a digital display and stuff, and if it costs you, uh, okay, now what currency should I use? Yeah, if it costs you $10 a year, and if this chip is going to be $2 extra, and for $15 you're getting, uh, sorry? Oh, that's a very non-ideal scenario then. Anyway, so uh, yeah, in this case, uh, two dollars plus. If you're getting a smart speaker for six dollars or something like that, would you get one? <laughs> no, because privacy. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, argument is to reduce the cost of adding smartness to this because uh, right now what happens is many a times you'd say something, but uh, it's not within your uh, range, within the audible range. So uh, all of these devices working together, creating a unifying experience, that's what, the, uh, that's what the goal is. And that's what science fiction has honestly taught us. Right? When you say something, something happens. That's what happened in uh, Star Trek or anywhere. OK, so uh, just to give an idea of uh, you know, how Alexa has grown. So these are, so the, on the y-axis, I have uh, how many million units sold. And uh, on the x, I have year, right? So uh, if you see this, Amazon said that by in 2018, they had sold over 100 million devices. And that's why this is interesting, because they started only four years ago. And this is very accelerated growth, right? They are putting uh, Alexa-enabled uh, devices inside TVs. They are putting it inside cars. They are putting it in your fridge and ovens. They're putting it everywhere. Apart from the Echo Dot devices, that the standalone devices, uh, they have managed to put that everywhere, and they are aggressively growing. Uh, this is not exactly a tech metric as such, but uh, I recently read that Google is hiring as many engineers as Amazon's Alexa division. So that's the amount of uh, aggressive growth that's happening. And Amazon is honestly not the only one who is doing this. There are many other people who are uh, working on it. And uh, as more and more devices come into this field, like 100 million is a big number. But as it goes bigger, there will be a lot more integration because to get to the next 100 million, you have to integrate with other services. For example, something that was unthinkable kind of happened where Amazon and Apple announced that you know they are going to start supporting AirPlay. AirPlay 2 in uh, coming devices, which is very interesting because uh, Apple has always been cagey about its protocols, and suddenly they are opening up because they see the opportunity in that. Okay, so now, uh, can I get the mic? Yes, okay. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to uh, show is uh, a quick demo. Uh, hopefully, this works because I'm having issues with the <coughs> Wi-Fi connectivity. But essentially, what I have here is a small development board. Uh, it's a pretty low-cost development board. I think it costs $15 or something. Uh, you can buy it off uh, Mauser and a couple of other websites. And what I've done is I've configured my Amazon account inside of this, and I've configured uh, a Wi-Fi uh, network as part of this. So now what I'm going to do is, hello. Okay. Hello. Okay, so I'm definitely having issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a video instead. 
because this was okay so uh, to give an idea of what is possible uh, so this is a device which is of this size right so this is the module and we have managed to so this is the same module that's here right and what we have done is we have put a speaker behind it and a small battery and what we have managed to do is shrink it to the size of an oreo right so it's as small as an oreo basically and what we have is a completely self sustained battery operated can you increase the volume uh okay 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 i'll do this where's the audio coming from okay so the audio is coming from that okay 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 but uh, as you can see uh, essentially what we have is uh we have managed to get a voice assistant uh, recording data sending it to the cloud and getting it back from the cloud and playing it on the speaker and that's not all because we still have a lot of uh, we still have a lot of memory or still a lot of processing power left after all of that happens so uh, this is one more example Oh no it's okay No I'm good I guess Okay Okay so in this particular scenario what we are having is uh, along with I did I get it? Yeah so I have the board I'll uh, pass around later So along with doing uh, like recording audio sending it to the cloud getting the response back and playing it uh what we also do is wake word recognition which is uh completely happening offline so uh this is interesting because if you are privacy conscious uh, you might be thinking that you know i can't see the source code for what is happening inside of an echo why don't you just get an esp32 flash the device with your own firmware we have the sdk out there and then it's easier for you to sleep at night but uh if you are still more adventurous and are uh, wanting to try out something more uh, in this scenario what we have is we have face detection face recognition and a voice assistant all on one esp32 so uh, i'll just uh, quickly show the demo so this is a colleague of mine this is amay amay and that's me in the background both of our faces have been preconfigured in this the training also happens on the device there is no cloud connectivity involved in this at all uh so when he comes in front of the so did you realize so he so the assistant so in this case i'm uh, using a google uh, dialog flow assistant right it's not necessary that you use alexa or google voice assistant because those are personalities so uh i'll come back to my slide later but essentially those are personalities you if you want to make your own there are services like the ones that uh, suzyai.people are using right so in this case we are using google dialog flow which is a google service for chatbots which also includes text as well as audio stuff right so what happens is uh, the device uh, recognizes that you know this is amay instead of anuj and uh, asks amay what kind of coffee he wants so he said latte that's a lot but now when i come it recognizes that it's me uh hey dude what do you drink today yeah the pronouns how many teaspoons of sugar one teaspoon nice choice and that's better than amay <laughs> right so uh, these are the kind of things that uh, we are kind of enabling by putting these things here again the face recognition and face detection the face recognition happens at i think 6 frames per second and uh, face detection happens at 6 frames per second and the recognition happens at 3 frames per second 
which is pretty fast, pretty snappy. And uh, again, all of this is open source. So if you want to make your own products, you could just go to our GitHub, download all of this, get one of our boards, and uh, make it, right? But that's the idea, that uh, I don't want to say what coffee I want every day, right? And if there's a product that fixes that, that's great. OK. Uh, I have a couple of more demos, but I'll come back to it. So the difference between uh, Alexa, uh, Google Voice Assistant, and others is the personality, right? Uh, Alexa is known to tell jokes. It will have skills. It will, it will talk in a certain way. It will have that sass, right? But when you're building your own product, you don't necessarily want to be limited by that or be part of that, right, for whatever branding results uh, that we have. That's why uh, plus privacy is a major concern here, right? Uh, a lot of people that I've spoken to have said that, you know, uh, we think that this is always listening to us, right? And uh, that might not be true, but it is very difficult to convince people otherwise. And the best way to do that actually is to make the something available to them which can put them at ease. Uh, making something open source that you can flash yourself but uses the same APIs in the background, uh, that's a good sell, right? So yeah, Alexa is a personality, OK Google is a personality, but the underlying technology be, uh, behind all of this is the Amazon Lex service provided by AWS, as well as the Google Dialogflow. So essentially, uh, we've managed to add support for both. We haven't released the Lex bit because there are some, uh, so it wasn't meant to be run like the way we are running it right now. But uh, yeah, the Google Dialogflow thing is on GitHub already. And you can make your own. You can give your own uh, personality to these devices. You can create your own responses. You can create your own SaaS, because that's what, that's what makes them fun, right? When you watch Iron Man, you like Jarvis, because Jarvis is sarcastic. Like, he talks back to Iron Man. He, he's not some, OK, sir, thank you, sir type, right? Like, he, he, he has that SaaS. And that's what you want to build in your products, right? Because that's, that's honestly fun. Plus, uh, there are some more reasons why uh, this thing needs to catch up. Uh, because essentially, we have been using buttons and display, then we graduated to screens with touch built in them. But there are quite a few reasons. I was talking to Bunny uh, on Thursday, and he said one of the things that he wants to do in his new product is make it possible uh, to record audio and listen to audio. And that's because not everyone can read and write. Right? Not everyone, even if they can read and write, maybe they're uh, permanently or temporarily disabled from doing that. So accessibility is a, a big thing when it comes to uh, these technologies. OK, I've messed up the sequence of that, because accessibility was supposed to come later. <laughs> but anyways, coming back, uh, I, I wanted to show this, because you know this is one of the early washing machines. And there are no buttons and no displays. This is a more, so actually, I think my parents have this exact same model. But because uh, there is no display on this. There are just buttons. And the newer versions come with displays. I think most of us might have this uh, in your houses. So that's how uh, the way HCI has evolved, right? Because this is essentially a computer in one way or the other. And the interaction between them has changed. And now we are at a point where voice interaction is so cheap and uh, so accessible that we are able to add it at virtually no cost to our product, which is the interesting bit, because all of this can go away if I can talk to my product. OK, I have a demo. So in this case, instead of Alexa, uh, we have a Google Dialogflow bot where we are talking about the conversation will be initiated with 
30 degrees. Where is the wash cycle? Medium wash. Started laundry with temperature 30 and medium wash cycle. So, uh, yeah, and what's interesting is that it gets better with time. For example, uh, you don't have to set it in stone because all the communication is happening in the cloud. Right? You can evolve the way you say it. For example, you could say, instead of it being a conversation, it could be a one-way instruction where you're like, do X, Y, and Z. And that's the good thing because uh, asking people to constantly update uh, their firmware is a very uh, tricky piece because not everyone likes that. It's invasive. Uh, people would like, why well, I have to do this again and again? But when you're, once you're building a natural language interface, uh, all of that goes away because uh, you don't have to ask the user to do anything because it's just a dummy terminal. And OK. Yeah, OK. So yeah, so the, this was supposed to be the last video, but I actually showed it earlier on. Uh, but that's about it from my end. Uh, I think uh, putting voice assistance on microcontrollers is a pretty big deal. Uh, we are not the only ones working on it. There are some other people, uh, like NXP, who are also working on it. Uh, and it's interesting because accessibility is one. Uh, no need for updates is another. And yeah, I mean, honestly, for me, the coolest part is the science fiction aspect of it, right? Uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey, anyone? But uh, yeah, uh, it's been uh, the dream, as always. Like, it's always been the dream when it comes to science fiction to have a very natural language interface with technology. Uh, any questions? Is that good? So any questions, remarks? What was the audio input source? Sorry? Uh, the audio input source, what for this? Oh, uh, there's a mic on the development board. Iris? Yeah, I mean, we have a driver I see who does that for us. Essentially, what we also do is we also support uh, multiple wake word engines. Some of them are software, some of them are hardware, in which case the mic has to be routed through them because they do the processing on that. So essentially, they are DSPs. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we work with a couple of DSPs. Uh, DSPG is one, uh, MicroSemi is another. I think we have six one, including six, uh, yeah, five or six ones, including Intel. And we also do the DSP bits on ESP32 as well. Uh, that will take up more uh, application code space and all of that, but uh, it's doable. Like when you say Alexa, the wake word detection happens on the ESP32 itself. Yeah. And the face recognition is also done inside the DSP32. Yes. So the question is, is the face detection thing done inside DSP32? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. There is no communication with anybody other than DSP32. Is, is there enough CPU power? Yeah. We actually have some left <laughs> after that, where we are doing all the voice-related stuff. We could actually still do some more things there. If you, if you are interested in, I have a small development board uh, for that kind of a demo. And we also have the source code available on GitHub, so you are free to write. But yeah, I mean, uh, we do that locally. Uh, the machine learning bits are there, but everything's local. It's not communicated to anybody on the same network or outside the network. So we have enough uh, muscle locally. So two questions. The, the video one, uh, how do you interface the camera? The ESP? Uh, so I think that's Pi. Oh, okay. That, that's not that's not a ESP. Uh, no, how do you, like how do you interface the camera to the ESP? Yes, no, I think it's a spy. A oh, spy, spy camera. No, okay. I think so. I'm not exactly sure. I'll have to check the schematic. But uh, the whole thing is up on GitHub. So. Yeah. And the other one was uh, so the the detection is happening. The word detection is either happening on the DSP or. So or ESP32. Yeah. Then you just send the entire audio up to the. Yeah, so essentially the way it works, it's, it's all streaming. We don't store it locally. That's one of the reasons why we have been able to do it on a microcontroller, because we don't have need a lot of RAM for that. 
So what it does is it says start recording and then when it detects, uh, like when it detects that some sentence has ended, then it will give us another uh, indication saying that, okay, we are done. One last question. The, yeah. uh, the list of codecs you said earlier, or about the audio codecs, are these all soft? Uh, no, codecs? some are soft, some are hard. Okay. So some of them you do soft decoding or encoding yeah. in the other ones. You have to yeah. yeah. SPI, I, I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. SPI. Uh, so if I have an IP cam connected to Wi Fi, can that video be streamed to the ESP32 for facial recognition? In theory, it I seems to be possible. I think so. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of what the bottleneck will be in this case. Frame buffers, yes. Uh, Yeah, so but but yeah, but typically our IP cameras are pretty. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but that's actually an interesting question. I I'll I'll ask the right people about it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have many cameras and you can have ESP32 doing that. Uh, yeah. Uh, not yet. Not on GitHub at least. Uh, but we do have it working. Uh, it's actually one of those PRs that's assigned to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Essentially, it works. Uh, there are some edge cases that haven't been handled. But that's one of the good things of having ESP32 that we have BLE as well as BT on board. So then you use BLE to provision the device with your login credentials as well as all of that. And then we use BT for all of that. Yeah? If the device uh, with a sensor connected for use as a monitoring, does it support uh, encryption when sending back to the server? Uh, does it support encryption? encryption? Yeah. So all of this is a, a TLS. So all the communication that happens between a microcontroller and uh, Amazon's APIs or Google's APIs, everything is TLS. Because those guys won't have it any other way, and neither would we. Because this is pretty sensitive information. And uh, all of this, there's no uh, unencrypted bits anywhere in this. So the only attack vectors are probably physical. Yeah. Last question. I'm going to be around, so anybody has any questions? Okay. Working on just on that uh, IP cam uh, concept, if let's say we have a room, a few IP cams into your ESP32, uh, potential could be used for uh, vocalization of a person right. or object, because right. now you have yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the object. Actually, there's also scope for doing that using Wi Fi. Yeah, you, of course, there are multiple ways to do that. But uh, there's also some uh, work that's been done for localization. Yeah. Yeah, so you'll probably need multiple. Ways. Also, I just understood what you meant by the audio codecs you were talking yes. about. Yes. Yeah, all of that is soft. soft right? yeah, yeah, all of that is soft. I thought you were talking about how we drive yeah, speakers. No, 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 all of that is soft. Yeah, all of that is soft. I thought you were, I, I misunderstood because I, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, very interesting. I think we can continue the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we yeah. have to start with the next yeah. talk in two minutes. So thanks to speaker.